I'm an Israeli, and I want people to know that I'm glad that I'm an Israeli, and that I'm not embarrassed by the fact that I'm an Israeli. A divided U.S. Supreme Court on Monday struck down a law that would allow American citizens born in Jerusalem to have Israel listed as their birthplace on passports, saying it unlawfully encroached on the president's powers to set foreign policy. The 6-3 to three vote ruling, a victory for President Barack Obama, comes at a time of strained relations between Israel and the United States, the Jewish state's most important ally. The Obama administration had said that if the law were enforced, it would have undermined the U.S. government's claim to be a neutral peacemaker in the Middle East. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Prophecy in the News, as presented by remnantofgod.org. And we're going to be covering the dates... For uh, 6 9 2015 to today's date June 15 2015 and this will be uploaded uh, probably Tuesday evening uh, which would be the 16th of 2015 and as you can see the video that uh, I uh, just played for you was the first article mentioned here and again as um, I was saying before um, I'm going to read the article, and I'm also going to read the comments made within this article by Nicholas, the uh, webmaster of remnantofgod.org. I'm going to reading the I'm going to be reading these comments verbatim. Um, you know, even though there's going to be some stuff I might disagree on some of the comments here, but uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that's profound um, as far as current events. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Alright, the article say, states as follows, as you heard in the video, quote, It's the latest skirmish in a fight that has been going on since 1948 when Israel was recognized as a nation. The justices denied a challenge brought by the parents of a 12-year-old whose case had been in the courts for a decade. A majority of the justices refused to allow the Jerusalem reference to birthplaces and passports. It's far from the first time that an argument has erupted over Jerusalem and its designations. The power to recognize or decline to recognize a foreign state and its territorial bounds resides in the president alone, Kennedy wrote. Recognition is an act with immediate and powerful significance for international relations, so the president's position must be clear. Congress cannot require him to contradict his own statements regarding a determination of formal recognition. But Justices Samuel Al Alito and Antonin Scalia and John Roberts said they would have approved the plan to let Americans born in Jerusalem list Israel as their place of birth on their passports. Both Israelis and Palestinians want Jerusalem as their capital. USA Today said the issue arose when Congress in 2002 allowed citizens born in Jerusalem to designate Israel as their home country. President George W. Bush declined to follow that and President Obama followed in his footsteps. In Britain, the advertising watchdog banned a tourism ad that suggested the old city of Jerusalem was part of Israel. And just two years ago, the White House released what it said was a map of Israel. The only problem was that Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the Golan Heights were missing. Even Google Earth previously divided the city of Jerusalem and placed a Temple Mount within Palestinian territory. End quote. Now, here comes the commentary. The reason Congress, under orders of Rome, is against a 12-year-old boy listing his birthplace as Jerusalem is because of their long prophesied plans for that region of the Middle East. As the prophet Daniel stated long ago, Rome craves that land as their own, and they will do all they can to attain it. Long ago, when they made plans to attain it, they used the Muslims with the agreement that when the horrors of killings were complete, the Muslims would give Rome the city of Jerusalem. But they renegated on their agreement, and the Crusades were born. This, by the way, is why to this day Muslims hate Christians. They blame Christians for what Rome did during those Crusades. But the Vatican is not a Christian church. But then truth is not something Islam likes to adhere to anyway, so the killings continue. So what's happening? Back in September of 2001, I wrote the Truth Provided newsletter titled, titled One World Government, wherein I shared how the Prophet Daniel predicted the Vatican had long 
laid plans to take over Jerusalem and, as Daniel puts it, sought to plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. See much more info on this here. In that, in that newsletter, I shared a few previous newsletters touching on the same topic that one can see lead up to what happened in 2000. <clears throat> there are actually many more facts on this than was shared in those newsletters as well as all over this website confirming that, yes, the Vatican is seeking to take the land of Jerusalem as its own, but in order to be able to do so, Jerusalem must be officially removed from the nation of Israel so as to become a nation all on its own that the Pope can sit in claiming it as his own once all sovereignty is lost within all NWO nations. A place most students of prophecy do see as a stage for Antichrist's first appearance, an appearance that is necessary to the enforcement of the mark of the beast. I go into much more detail in my September Truth Provided newsletter, and so I won't cover all that here, but suffice it to say, today's news and comments made 15 years ago, one can see that this is their plan and prophecy will be fulfilled. This is all besides the fact that many smokescreens on the media and the pulpit try to, to uh, declare otherwise. Uh, I just kind of want to interject here um, because what uh, Nicholas, I think, is failing to mention here is they also have um, the futurist agenda they are trying to fulfill too. Speaking of a false 70th week of Daniel to bring about a false seven year tribulation period. That is a counterfeit um, because as learned students of prophecy or prophecy students of the Bible, uh, they do realize as well as all throughout history that the 70th week of Daniel was fulfilled by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, all of it, um, even the 70th week. And so what they're trying to do now is to uh, fulfill their false prophecy, their counterfeit 70th week. And this is why Jerusalem is um, being used as a center stage for some of these e events. And uh, one, you know, has to take, has to blink a blind eye to realize that, you know, gullible Christians are falling for this. Um, all you got to do is look at all, at all the mainstream Christian sites you know, such as WorldNet Daily and these types of things regarding Jerusalem and the tribulation period and the arrival of a antichrist, a one-man antichrist that's going to sign a peace treaty with Israel for seven years and thus counterfeiting, completing the, completing the counterfeiting of the 70th week of Daniel. I, I have a strong feeling that is what is at hand here when it comes to Jerusalem and uh, and um, Israel because again as those that diligently like Bereans search the scriptures they will realize that Jerusalem was judged once already it was uh, burnt to the ground not one stone was left upon another and so therefore it fulfills the aspects of the kingdom of heaven cometh not with observation okay so because uh, what happened post-70 AD is they always try to rebuild, but God's presence is not in the rebuilding of this current Jerusalem on this earth. <clears throat> because uh, there is a city coming whose builder and maker is God, and it's not done by human hands. And that's what we have to really be focusing on. So all of this going on in Jerusalem is nothing more but a smokescreen. It's nothing more than uh, setting up a counterfeit fulfillment of prophecy. So let me continue. This is all besides the fact that many smokescreens on the media and the pulpit try to declare otherwise. We all know about the many confusing statements of politicians to cloud the issues on all this, but many are unaware of an old lie that was generated over 100 years ago. But about Turkey being the king of the north, which was prophesied to rear its ugly head in the end to lure many off the path of truth so as to be unprepared for what's really happening. But scripture, prophecy, and historic record, as well as current events confirm the king of the north is and always has been the Roman Catholic Vatican. 
click here for all the historic scriptural and current events. Again, all these highlighted blue uh, text um, has um, hyperlinks on it that you can click for more information. So, by the way, many of us knew about all this long before I posted what I did in 2000. I was, as were others, I'm sure, awaiting the smoking gun before going public on any of this because I know that confirmation does make for a surefire way to prevent being tagged a false teacher. On September 6, 2000, it was reported the following, quote, In a speech to the European Parliament in Strasbourg, Ahmed Koria said the Palestinians would support internationalizing all of Jerusalem, including Arab East Jerusalem, occupied illegally by Israel since 1967. Should the two sides fail to reach a final settlement in the crucial weeks ahead, unless we can reach an agreement on Jerusalem, I have to declare that both parts of Jerusalem, East and West, should be a unified international Jerusalem, not just the capital of Israel or Palestine, but a capital of the world, says, said Mr. Kioria, who is Speaker of the Palestinian Parliament. End quote. The Guardian Unlimited Suzanne Goldenberg in Jerusalem, Wednesday, September 6, 2000. Pretty sure some of you have uh, possibly heard that. Clinton also echoed those statements at least one time that I know of when angered by reporters trying to defend Israel. In any event, it appears that 15 years of assassinations, wars, constitutional changes, sanctions, and who knows what else have been successful. Soon the New World Order governed by Caesar and Rome will be set up in Jerusalem and the long-awaited ten hairs will be jut jutted forward politically to assure the ten toes of Daniel are wiggling, well-groomed, and ready for orders. Next article. From uh, June 10th, 2015. Coliseum killing machine reconstructed after more than 1,500 years. Quote, for the first time, experts recreate, and again, I have to mention that you can click on this hyperlink to get the actual article from Telegraph if you want to read the full article. For the first time, experts recreate one of the 28 timber machines that hoisted wild animals into the, into the Coliseum where they were pitted against gladiators and each other. They hoisted up tens of thousands of terrified wild animals to the blood-soaked sands of the Colosseum now. More than 1,500 years after the last fights between lions, lepers, and bears, one of the ingenious wooden machines that carried the beasts to certain death has been reconstructed in the middle of the ancient Roman arena." End quote. And the commentary is as follows. Why do this? Well, if you read between the lines, it should appear somewhat obvious. They purposely said absolutely nothing about the historic fact that many of those animals lifted to the arena back then were lions who had been purposely starved so as to make the Christians huddled together in the arena appear as a perfect meal for the big cats. Rome's wound is healed, and so blood sports will soon become the norm across the board. No, I don't see them using these amphitheaters anytime soon, as it is considered to be more of a historical monument now. And it simply doesn't have the ability to house tens of thousands of spectators without massive renovations. There are too many laws protecting Rome's ancient symbols of triumph, so they think, over the Creator God, that they simply aren't ready to tear them down. But I do see the exact same hatred of Christians by the Roman Catholic Church today, but then they have stated in writing for eons how much they hate us. With so many Christians being killed annually by the Vatican using the Islamic smokescreen, as well as numerous unjust laws being passed all over the world, what are the purposely designed what world that are purposely designed to persecute Christians as well as weaken the faith of the lukewarm masses and all the churches? Having a well publicized documentary on a blood curdling place known by all as the first stadium of Rome wherein their lust for blood was well oiled, not good. Being as close to the end as we are, one can expect Satan to do all he can to make being on his side of the fence enjoyable for everyone under his thumb. Resignating the old flame for his fellow demons is bound to be on his agenda, just as much as it is for those people his demons reside in. Even he has to deal with moral as decadent as that may seem, or even he has to deal with morale as decadent as, they may, as that may seem. 
After all, he is their leader, and he has to make their eternally regretful decision to follow him out of heaven is something he has to deal with like any corrupt leader would. In any event, don't let it bother you. Fear is only an emotion from hell. It's just as fleeting as the existence of those that fuel it. Quote, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 Now, yes, I know the Colosseum is far from complete, and yes, I know if they wanted to, they could hold gatherings there as they already do and have numerous tours file in and out on a daily basis. That being said, they could decide to use the Colosseum for blood sports once they legalize actual death in the ring, and they will. But even if they don't use the actual site of the ancient Colosseum, they can build a replica to fulfill their wildest nightmares. After all, why else would the Gladiator School be on pace to be restored in Rome as we speak? I will repeat that. Yes, the Gladiator School is on pace to be restored in Rome. And here is the actual article about that. One last thing, for those that think I'm talking out of my tinfoil cap in that they won't ever think of using an ancient landmark like a Roman amphitheater to kill Christians as possible in today's world, are you kidding me? First of all, Muslims under Vatican orders are killing Christians to the tune of one every two minutes around the world as we speak. In fact, they often do so in large numbers before cameras just to entertain Rome while all the same time hope to foster fear in the hearts of lukewarm Christians looking on. Still, as I stated earlier, I am aware the main Roman Colosseum in Italy is not a likely place for public executions. Perhaps private ones for the rich, but were you aware they have already started killing people in ancient Roman amphitheaters that are lesser known? Just a week ago, they forced civilians to watch the executions of 20 men at a Roman amphitheater. And here is the article depicting... The ice, uh, the um, headline for that. That being said, are the scales finally starting to fall from your eyes? After all, Christian prophecy will be fulfilled. Does it really matter how they do it, seeing that the killings are already here and the exponential increase is inevitable? Why would you think it could never happen when your very own Bible say otherwise? Seriously, look at what you, a Bible-believing Christian, is saying here. All the prophecies that were to occur up to this point have occurred with 100% accuracy, but you want me and everyone else you talk to believe the remaining few somehow won't be fulfilled. And I would just like to add that, or they will be fulfilled, but we're not going to be here when they do get fulfilled. Really? Me thinks following the Lord and not the fearful whining of a few disobedient Christians is the better way to go. Next article. This is where it gets interesting. From June 11th, 2015, Vatican and UN team up on climate change against skeptics. Quote, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon discussed climate change with the Pope before opening a one-day conference of scientists and religious leaders called the moral dimensions dimensions of climate change and sustainable development. Now, <laughs> I love it when they use that term moral, okay? Because when they use that term moral, they are thinking of natural, human natural law. When you look at the Pope, when they use the term moral, they are using it in the aspect of their quote-unquote Ten Commandments, the Pope's morality and these types of things okay so that is very interesting nice little cho choice of words there again UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon discussed climate change with the Pope before opening a one-day conference of scientists and religious leaders called the moral dimensions of climate change and sustainable development Ooh, that's, that's a nice little word there. 
Mitigating climate change and adapting to its effects are necessary to eradicate extreme poverty, reduce inequality, and secure equitable, sustainable economic development. Uh, and it's very interesting that Hillary Clinton, on her first uh, climate speech, climate speech, <laughs> I guess you kind of say a climate speech, but on her first campaign speech was talking about a renewed prosperity that we need in this country for all and these types of things. And it's just very interesting, you know, the, the choice of words that were used. So the comments are as follows. Now we see how the enemy of souls was able to convince those under his control to go forward with his plan to use climate change to enforce the mark of the beast in Rome. It's the old standby, money. In fact, whenever you see a new law pass that you simply cannot understand why they passed something so ludicrous, you only need to look into two schools of thought to find out why they did it. Number one, will it make money for those passing the law? And number two, will it help the man of sin go forward with his plans to enforce the mark? Truth is, number one will always be found alongside number two, and that some of the more moral leaders would never even consider lobbying for certain laws unless they could somehow profit by them. Still, if you look closely, you will see that those pushing climate change for Rome will indeed benefit by it. Al Gore is living proof in that he has so far amassed over $200 million in his change purse, and that's as of 2013 data. It's much higher now. Still, as they in politics know, they need to con the masses into thinking they they too can benefit by all this and therefore must be the right thing to do, when in fact nothing can be further from the truth. The rich will get richer and the poor poorer, just as they have been since this, since this fiasco began. And thanks to the refined foods, GMO, chemtrails, Hollywood movies, video games, drug, drugs pushers, and the AMA and government... Uh, and government flood funded school systems, the AMA by the way is uh, the American Medical Association, and government funded school systems, most people are already conditioned into believing their leaders truly are doing all this to eradicate extreme poverty, reduce inequality, and secure e equitable, equitable, sustainable economic development. And I just want to point that out. That um, I want to just read this phrase again. Most people are already conditioned into believing their leaders truly are doing all this to eradicate extreme poverty, reduce inequality, and secure equitable, sustainable economic development. And let me just chime in here and say that their leaders, the these conditioned sheeples, leaders, um, get their orders from the Vatican. So what does this mean that these um, people that are already conditioned due to the refined foods, GMO, chemtrails, Hollywood movies, video games, drug, drug pushers in the American Medical Association and government funded school systems. What does that mean? Well, just because they aren't bound down to the beast yet doesn't mean that they won't. They're already being conditioned to. Okay, so, and again, prophecy will be fulfilled. After all, no one likes to admit they were duped into voting for someone who openly lied to them. So, look again. Do you see anything in their comments other than promises of wealth? And did you notice it kind of sounds like the exact same type tripe preached from the pulpits of Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, and Joe Osteen, just to name a few? Their so-called sermons make the people think they need more money in life to be considered blessed, and so those following the herd will always clamor to their side for the gold crumbs that fall from their master's table. This is especially powerful when their pastors show off their new personal jets and multi-million dollar mansions before their congregations. The sheeple in the pews believe it will somehow rub off on them, and so they religiously follow these pastors as if they are gods on earth. That's right. Did you catch the hint there? The Vatican's vulgar display of wealth and riches are in fact proclaiming them to be the very first prosperity preachers on the planet. And by the way, their prosperity message also echoes Rome's ecumenical message by declaring we are all Christians who believe in Jesus as Savior, so why not join as one in his name in one church and be rich? The fact they have been able to get the sheeple to bow to money 
as their supposed Christian right, it becomes mere child's play to get them to follow their lead in any area they point. Today, ecumenicalism, tomorrow, the mark. Is reality hitting home? Ask yourself this question. Did you buy your $40,000 or $60,000 car to get from point A to point B because you needed it or because you wanted what they told you needed or told you you needed or deserved and it would make you look blessed when you pull into the church parking lot? Do you listen to certain forms of music because your friends do or because it's the cool thing to do? Do you declare the truth as it is written in the Bible when talking with like-minded Christians or do you agree with them regarding Allah, homosexual marriage? or sodomite marriage, or even alcohol because you don't want to come off as prudish or too religious? Do you keep your valid and well-researched opinions to yourself when talking with these same friends so as to not rock the boat? Or do you let them know the facts they seem to have missed? James 4.4 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoso therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Truth is truth, by the way. I will be expounding on this prophesied fact in this week's sermon. Uh, the sermon title is Global Warming Equals Global Government. I don't know if you can... Uh, it says you can click here, but I don't know if you can watch archived sermons uh, regarding a specific topic. I haven't searched that on this website yet. I'm pretty sure you can. Maybe you can just click here and it'll point you to some archives. I'm not sure. But that is a very interesting article. Um, and well and, and, and this was very well written. I have to say, this, is, this article was uh, by far the best one out of this week's articles here. Next article. From June 12th, 2015. Teachers bow to Allah, celebrate Islam. Now, remember the um, very first article I talked about last week. This, this, this is kind of connected to that. Teachers bow to Allah, celebrate Islam. Quote, about 50 teachers and administrators at one Pennsylvania school district attended a recent training session on Islam and Arabic culture during an all-day in-service workshop that came at taxpayer expense. Among the attendees, Superintendent Marianne Bartley and a handful of other administrators, now can you see the hypocrisy here with these public schools? EAGnews.org reported, the training session included a comparison contrast of U.S. Arab education as well as a visit to a local mosque to learn more about the Islamic religion and to join in the congregation's prayer service, the news outlet said. But what if this was offensive to Christians? Can't they stand up and say anything? No, they cannot. Because this is the land of hypocrisy. This isn't the land of the free and home of the brave. This is the land of hypocrisy. That's what it is. Teachers and administrators removed their shoes at the mosque and mingled with the congregation discussing God, Islam, and Christianity. It's only right to talk about Christianity if Islam is included. The news outlet reported, We believe we will be judged by God, Omar said, at the mosque, EAGnews.org reported. The more good deeds do we do, God will forgive us in the end. You must work. Faith without work will not be accepted. End quote. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so the commentary is as follows. First and foremost... Why on earth are American teachers bowing to Allah in a Muslim mosque when these very same teachers will sue the daylights out of you if you so much as ask them to speak the name of Jesus in an, in an American classroom? In fact, I just posted an article titled Teacher, Teachers Suing Over Bibles, Prayer Circles, Ministering, Yet We See These Teachers in a Muslim Mosque. Why is that? It's because Rome is indoctrinating the teachers so as to make it that much easier to indoctrinate the children they are hired to teach and care for. And again, that's what they are being conditioned. Just like the movies, just like the music, just like the TV shows, the South Parks, the Family Guy. All of it, okay? It's all a conditioning tool, regardless if, you're, if you realize you're being conditioned or not, to automatically bow to the beast. 
and it doesn't have to be a literal bowing okay so let me say that again those that are that are being indoctrinated by all this garbage is already being conditioned to wander after the beast so therefore they will more likely end up wandering after the beast if they are not already how do I know Rome's behind this have you seen my Pope and Islam page on the website wherein I have hundreds of articles linked out confirming the Vatican is pushing Islam into the churches as well as society right now you may also want to look at my Pope wrote Quran page wherein I not only show doctrinal agreements between the Roman Catholic Catechism and Islamic doctrines along with articles and links to additional info I also posted a video on that page wherein an ex-Muslim confirms the Vatican wrote the Quran without a even knowing it. But the article here went on to say, quote, The more good deeds we do, God will forgive us in the end. You must work. Faith without works will not be accepted. Yes, the Christian scripture does say in James 2.20 that faith without works is dead. But the beginning of the statement, which was, the more good deeds we do, God will forgive us in the end, is not found in Scripture. But it is found in Roman Catholic dogma, and this was a Muslim that said, that quoted that, that said that. They, like pagans, teach you, teach you will gain heaven by your works. That completely eliminates the need for a Savior. Which means that you become your own Savior. Which means you become God. What's really sad about all this, these teachers that know bowing to the true God is illegal in, American, in America inside classrooms openly bowed to Allah anyway and even joined in a prayer service to Allah in that mosque. But then they weren't the first Americans to do this. And no, not even Roman Catholics were the first to be reported as bowing to Allah in Muslim mosques. Truth is, the present Jesuit Pope didn't pray to Allah in mosques until November of 2014. So who was the first so-called Christian church to be photographed bowing to Allah in a Muslim mosque? Are you sitting down? It was the Seventh-day Adventist church. Click here for a photograph. And here we go. There you see it. Right there. This is a, a, at a Seventh-day Adventist church. Both students and faculty to, uh, bowing down to Allah in the mosque in Arusha. Click here for a photograph that was displayed with pride at Andrews University Focus Magazine on page 21 back in the summer of 2009. Is it any wonder shortly thereafter that Seventh-day Adventist pastors started to declare Allah is God and the Quran is as holy as the Christian Bible on camera? And that ends that article. And here we jump to the article from June 14th, 2015, just yesterday, and this is a video, and um, I'll just, I mean, I'll, I'll link you to the video in the description box below. All you have to do is click the show more button, and you'll see it. It's called Hard Questions for Evolutionists, Part 1 of 2, Dr. Carl Bogue. It is a lengthy video, it's 56 minutes long, but um, I'm pretty sure you will find it somewhat interesting. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the caption here. And it says, please, please click the above link. It's a video of Dr. Carl Bogg, a well-known creationist speaker, scientist, and author. He has sufficiently exposed every lie about evolution, and I have used his works many times over the years to help evolutionists see they have been lied to. In this video, he is speaking on evolution, but fast forward to 12 minutes in the video and listen to what he says for the next 17 minutes. Bog has a tendency to be very thorough. Pay special close attention when the video gets to about 
16 minutes 47 seconds in the video okay so make sure you do that when you click on this link A little homework for you guys <laughs> First and foremost, no, I don't trust Dr. Bach's Trinitarian doctrines as I have ample evidence Rome invented it, and I don't trust TBN as it is being used by Satan to confuse Christians all over the world to join in Rome's long prophesied ecumenical charge, but Dr. Bog does unearth some tangible historic evidence in hand, in fact, that I believe can be very valuable to everyone that's dealing with loved ones trapped in the prophesied One God movement that heralds the arrival of Antichrist. It has to do with a 1 John 5, 7 and how some preach it is not supposed to be in the Bible. Some of you are going to be shocked by what's in this video. In short, you will find in this video that he reveals using actual ancient manuscripts that 1 John 5, 7 was in fact in the original manuscripts that laid the foundation for the King James Bible we have today. As I stated earlier, there are some to this day that say it is not supposed to be in there because they claim... It wasn't in the original manuscript. Bog also outlined the fact that 1 John 5 7 wasn't in Vatican and other corrupted manuscripts. And this is why it's removed from the NIV and other bogus Bibles. But it was in the inspired one that was used for the King James Version of the Bibles as well as the manuscript as the, as the manuscript Martin Luther used to translate his Bible into German during the Reformation. It costs an immense amount of money to get this old book in hand. And I praise God it was Dr. Bog that was called to receive it because others made offers to try and get it away from him. The reason why I am glad he got it and not them was because had they bought it, this truth may have never been confirmed or placed in a museum where anyone can view it. Yes, it's true that those of us that have the truth within... I already know the truth about 1 John 5 7 which says for there are three that bear record in heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one those that claim Jesus isn't God and the Holy Spirit doesn't exist hate this passage with a passion as it proves they are being moved by Satan to preach his lies to the masses. Many have believed their lies over the years to such an extent that some of the modern day Bibles actually removed this passage from the book of 1 John, and some even have footnotes declaring the verse to be uninspired so as to hide the truth about the Godhead. But now, Dr. Carl Bogg actually has the book in his museum that was used as the foundation of the King James that proves 1 John 5-7 was in the original manuscript all along. Those that lied were hoping this book would never be uncovered or even found, but the truth will always come forth. As shared in the video, Dr. Bog paid just under 30000 for the book, and someone did try to buy it out from under him for 100000 a few days before he got the rest of the money. Methinks they wanted that book to keep this demonic doctrine alive so as to better herald the arrival of the one God Christian prophecy described as the Antichrist. And no, those of us that know Jesus personally never needed the original manuscript to verify the truth on this, as we have his promised Holy Spirit within, and we know all too well how to study doctrine, as Isaiah 28.10 says, is done by checking every precept, must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here little, there little. All we need is a word to verify the truth and expose the lies, but now that we have concrete evidence in hand which can be viewed by anyone visiting the Glendale Creationist Museum in Glendale, Texas, it makes our job that much easier. So again, this is uh, going to be a very interesting video to look at. Again, um, you know, the next seven, the 17 minutes starting from uh, the 12 minute mark is the most important, especially the 16 minute and 47 second mark. So you might want to check that out. Okay. And last but not least, signs of the times, volcanic activity at record levels. 
This is today, June 15th, 2015. And for tomorrow, it will be yesterday, <laughs> June 15th, 2015. Quote, the Earth's core is getting more restless, grinding and shifting underfoot, and increasingly spewing forth its fury from Alaska and Hawaii to Japan, Malaysia, Ecuador, Iceland, and Russia. The amount of volcanic activity has been at or near record levels in recent years. Some scientists say earthquakes, however, are clearly running at historically high levels since 1900, according to statistics from the U.S. Geological Survey. All the while, students of the Bible are pointing to Matthew 24 and saying, I told you so. They read in the flowing lava and glowing nighttime outbursts a biblical warning sign that can't be dismissed. And the commentary is as follows. Yes, students of prophecy have been declaring this truth for decades. One thing we have also declared over the years is that as it gets closer to the end, people that don't believe or even adhere to the truths as they are written in scripture would begin to see what, what we see. But they're looking at it from a different angle altogether. Yes, this article is written by someone echoing Matthew 24 and yes, Real Net Daily claims to be a Christian news source, but their theology is way off base and so they cannot be trusted when it comes to their prophetic or theological standpoint. Disobedience is not something the Lord has ever been known to bless. For example, the owner of Rolnet Daily has a tendency to pr promote strange doctrines like the Vatican's contrived seven-year tribulation, eternal life and hellfire, Sunday Sabbath, a secret rapture, and quite a few more spurious doctrines written by the enemy of souls and promoted by the man of sin in Rome. Still, even they can't help but, no but to notice things are clearly beginning to look like the world's coming to an end. That being said, they will no doubt push readiness for such things as a secret rapture or seven-year trib so as to garner, mo garner more souls into hellfire by using prophetic confusion. Let's just say by use also using prophetic Babylon or prophetic babble, which means confusion. The basics. Things like a massive increase in earthquakes or volcanic activity is something even the atheists can admit in how we all experience life on Earth today, but it won't change the mindset of those embracing the lies taught by Rome any more than a drunken skid row would stop partying if the so-called secret rapture were true and he saw all the Christians disappear. What gets me is how they only look at the obvious signs everyone else sees to only ignore the, only, the, the ones that truly matter. What do they ignore? <clears throat> well, everywhere you look, you see news sources like WND declaring the Jews in Israel are the chosen people, and they back it up using some of Rome's bogus prophecies that students of real prophecy know are nothing more than Vatican agendas designed to hide the truth about the real Israel of the Bible. If WND, World Net Daily, and the others would look in the Bible to see who the real Israel is, they would see what the obedient remnant sees, and Rome wouldn't have that much power to deceive. Or, take the knowledge being increased. Yes, we have technological advances that have gone off the chart once the end times began, but what about the knowledge of the biblical truth? Contrary to popular belief, there are people walking this earth that can and do understand scripture in ways most of the world can't grasp at all. So I kind of like how he put that, because he... Uh, he, he kind of stressed that, yes, knowledge being increased can apply to technological advances and these types of things. But it also, um, you can see an increase of the knowledge of biblical truth. And he recognizes that. A lot of people only recognize the one or, or they will recognize only the other. Okay. I mean, just like how I am talking to you right now. I mean, 30, 40, 50 years ago, I mean, this wouldn't, 40, 50 years ago, this wouldn't even be possible today. Even maybe 20, 30 years ago, this wouldn't be possible. You know, so, and also, as the Internet has grown, we have also had access to more information that, that helps guide us through our studies within scripture and these types of things um, and it has helped us to be the Bereans that we are so supposed to be 
and that when we read a historical document or a historical comment commentary from like a Henry Grattan Guinness or uh, you know a Matthew Henry Adam Clark and these types of things we have the ability to read those and we also have the ability to compare scripture with what those commentaries are to see if those things are so you know so and so what he has noticed here is kind of both ends of the spectrum and I and I tend to agree with this that yes it, it deals with both ends of the, of the spectrum a lot of people just always talk about the technological advances you know but they don't mention the word of God you know uh, knowledge being increased of the of biblical truth however at the same time there is a famine in the land and it's not a famine of bread or water but it's a, but it's a famine of hearing the word of God so you have that going on but yes there are a select a select few you know there are um, there is a little flock that is grasping some interesting truths written therein <sighs> moving further or what are the prophets I crave for pleasures in these last days real net daily never seems to realize a blatant reality that laws allowing for abortion sodomite marriage alcohol consumption legal marijuana and even porn just to name a few were prophesied as the end result of mankind clamoring after all things that make his flesh smile or what are the music industry that pipes all sorts of demonic tones over the airways and elevators on every cell phone available or even at your workplace free of charge do they not see what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saw when music was used in their day to move the people towards idol worship? Read Daniel 3, 1 through 7. Do they not know what Satan was not only was not only a covering cherub before the fall, but one that had music instruments built into his body? Read Ezekiel 28, 13. Do they not see how science has already conf confirmed that music can be used to help mankind memorize statements? with ease that can and do affect the subconscious of most people and again if if you're gonna sit on your high horse and your and your high horse and say oh well that doesn't have an effect on me I'm just listening to it for mm, to get some sort of truth out of the lyrics or whatever you know it, it, it's again just because you think it's not affecting you it is you know, <laughs> and I hate to say this, but if you think it does not affect you, then you're actually bringing a railing accusation against the devil saying that he's stupid. And the Bible actually says not to do that because Satan's not a dumb being, okay? He knows what he's doing. <laughs> so, I just figured I'd throw that little extra commentary in there. Or what are the more blatant signs of the end, um, like the sun turned into darkness back in 1780? Now, I don't really agree that this was a direct fulfillment of prophecy. Um, this is a specific doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist or Seventh-day Remnant Church, but they are very significant. That I will say, and that I will state. Or the papal rampage of 1,260 years that saw 500 million dead Christians that was prophesied in the Bible or the global earthquake that came in 1755 again that was not global that was roughly uh, the Lisbon earthquake um, not everyone felt that earthquake okay but again it was an earthquake of great significance and I know for a fact that we have had recent earthquakes that affected that people felt on a grander scale than this specific earthquake in 1755. Okay. Do they not realize the trouble between capital and labor forces was prophesied? That is true. Do they not know fear would be the norm among all nations today? Do they not know the immorality of today was prophesied to be off the charts? Or what are the bloody crimes prophesied to happen in broad daylight within the cities? that are now so common they rarely make the news they even miss the fact that the gospel has been preached globally thanks to satellites ham radio and yes the internet itself 
or what of the fact that characters like Harry Potter was a necessity so as to bring about the rise in occult activity that was also prophesied? Or what about the insects, birds, animals, and fish dying by the millions all over the planet, just as the prophet Hosea predicted, in, which you can read in Hosea 4, 1-3? through 3. No, they never see any of these events because they don't read, or at the very least, know how to read their Bibles as the prophet Amos predicted. Read Amos 8.11, and so the blunt signs like volcanic activity, earthquakes, or crazy weather that confirm we are very near the end is all they can possibly see. And since their neighbors, friends, relatives, and co-workers don't seem worried, they too feel safe, just as 1 Thessalonians 5.3 predicted 2,000 years ago. Had WorldNet Daily or anyone else in the media seen the signs decades ago that I listed here, which are only a smattering of all the signs already listed in the Bible, repentance might have been more prevalent by now. Still, some will see what we see. They will join our ranks and they will make it home in time for the long prophesied feast in New Jerusalem. How do I know that? I actually read my Bible daily. And that wraps up this week in Prophecy in the News. Um, we will have another segment um, next Monday to be uploaded Tuesday evening just as this video will be uploaded and ready for you this evening or Tuesday June 16th 2015 but this has been Prophecy in the News as prepared by remnantofgod.org um, and the dates listed are from June 9th, 2015 to June 15th, 2015 that will do it for this video, truth be told, truth be known stay safe, God bless, we'll see you next time, bye bye